Welcome to Science Check Chorus. In this video, we are going to see about fractional distillation. In the previous video, we have seen about simple distillation. So, fractional distillation. Uh, when there is a difference in the boiling point between two components of a mixture is less than 25 degrees Celsius, we go for fractional distillation. So, what is the major difference between the simple distillation and fractional distillation is that there is one apparatus which is being placed in the experimental setup. In case of fractional distillation, we have an additional apparatus called as fractionating column. In the end of this video, we will be able to understand the usage of this fractionating column. Fine. Now, let us take an example. Uh, we are taking two components that is ethanol and water. Ethanol's boiling point is 78 degrees Celsius and uh, the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. Now we are having this mixture of ethanol and water and we are taking it in a round bottom flask and we are heating it. Now when the temperature reaches 78 degrees Celsius, what is happening? The ethanol is getting vaporized. It is entering into gaseous state and it is entering the fractionating column. Now, what is happening to this vapor in the fractionating column? Before going into that, we will just understand what will be the temperature in this region and this region. So generally, in this fractionating column, the bottom part of the fractionating column is little hot than the upper one. That is, the upper portion of the fractionating column is cold and the lower portion of the fractionating column is hot. And it is very clear that the vapor with the high boiling point, be clear, the vapor with the high boiling point condenses very faster than the vapor with the low boiling point. So in this case, ethanol which is having a low boiling point condenses slowly, the cond condenses in the sense it is transforming to liquid state, gas is transforming to liquid state. Alcohol with the high boiling point condenses very fast than the ethanol. So, first thing, what is happening to this ethanol in the fractionating column? So, this fractionating column consists of glass beads in it. Now, once it reaches the 78 degrees Celsius, ethanol is getting vaporized and it reaches the fractionating column and it dashes all the glass beads and it tries to go to the top portion of the fractionating column. Now, once it like reaches this region, what is happening? This region is somewhat cold than this region. So, once the cold region comes, this vapor is getting condensed. It is again changing to liquid. So, there is a chance that all this liquid again falls down to the round bottom flask. But this is not happening. What happens is that the condensed liquid gets the heat from the ascending vapor which is coming back off it. So, once the condensation happens in this region, the vapor which is coming from here, coming back, these vapors are nothing but ascending vapor. That ascending vapor gives the heat to the condensed liquid. Once this liquid receives the heat, again it is re-vaporizing. So, all the liquid which is getting condensed is re-vaporized and all the vapors of the ethanol reaches the top portion of the fractionating column and this vapor again reaches the condenser where the water is present and it provides the cold temperature and again the condensation is taking place. All the ethanol vapors are condensing back to liquid and it is being collected in the conical flask. Now, what is happening to this water? During these process, it reaches 100 degrees Celsius. So, there is a chance that this water is also getting vaporized. Now, once it reaches 100 degrees Celsius, this water is getting vaporized. As I already told that, if the vapors with the high boiling point condense very fast. So, what is happening? In this particular region itself, the vapors of the water is again condensed back and it is falling into the same round bottom flask. In this way, we are separating the water and ethanol. Okay? Now, there are some applications of uh, this simple distillation and as well as fractional distillation. So the first thing is preparation of distilled water. The name itself suggests that it is distilled water. Now we get water from various natural sources which will be having many impurities and other minerals present in it. Now to purify this we 
do this distillation process and we get the purified water which is called as the distilled water. Now, this distilled water is being used in the uh, laboratories for uh, like various purposes. Uh, the second thing, preparation of ethyl alcohol. Preparation of ethyl alcohol is nothing but ethanol, ethyl alcohol or ethanol. It, it is the same. Now, nowadays we are using the sanitizers, right? This sanitizers consist of alcohol in it. This alcohol is nothing but our ethyl alcohol. So to prepare this ethyl alcohol, we do this distillation pro uh, process. So what we do in this, we got the ethyl alcohol that is nothing but ethanol. So that will be used in the preparation of many sanitizers. Uh, the next thing is uh, purification or separation of petroleum products. Crude oil is a natural source which exists under the earth's crust. From crude oil, we can separate out all the petroleum products such as petrol, diesel, kerosene and paraffin bags. All these petroleum products we get from crude oil by using this technique that is distillation. Clear? And uh, another thing, when we are uh, talking about this fractionating column, it is not that always we, we should use this glass beads. There are many different ways to use this fractionating column like it is uh, we can use some different plates to separate out the uh, components of the mixture too. Now uh, can you tell what is the usage of this particular fractionating column? It is nothing but this fractionating column is providing a surface area where heat exchange is taking place between the condensed liquid and the ascending vapor. So for that purpose we are using this fractionating column. So this is all about fractional distillation. Thank you.